G'day, Dave here, and we're looking at James chapter 3 from verse 2, looking at the power of words, the impact of our speech, uh, controlling the tongue, how our words can make a big impact. And, of course, the metaphor that's used here is that of the tongue. I remember being told as a young fellow to hold my tongue. Uh, it didn't mean I literally had to hold it. See, it's hard to talk if you do. Uh, I've been told to watch my mouth. Again, a metaphor. I wasn't really being asked to go and look into the mirror and see what my mouth looked like. Uh, and I, I know that there's a saying in wartime, loose lips sink ships. Uh, it's not that lips are flapping around doing something. It's that the words that are told to the wrong people at the wrong time could sabotage a naval fleet. Now, words can do huge good, but what we so often see, sadly, is the destruction that our words can bring. And that's what he describes for us here in James 3. It says, We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Now, that's not me, and I suspect that's not you, but it is Jesus. And we'll come back to Jesus, but in Jesus we see the one who is perfect, we see the one who never tells a lie, the one who never deceives, the one who never abuses people with language, the one who never boasts, and the one who never uses his words for any harm. It's only for good and it's only the truth. And of course, none of us can effectively say that that's been us. He goes on to use a number of metaphors just to show how powerful words can be. Verse 3, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal uh, to the thing that the horse bites on and you pull the reins and the horse goes this way or the horse goes that way or so I'm told. I don't think you should ever get on something that's got its own mind. I'm happy to ride a motorbike but a horse, well, it might take me anywhere. Or take ships as an example. Although they're so large and are driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Now, I don't know much about big ships, but I do ride on a kayak. My kayak has a rudder. And if that rudder's down and in the water, I just need a small movement of that tiny little rudder to point the kayak the way that it should go. If I forget to put the rudder in the water, then I will be going this way and that way all over the place and I will not be able to steer it. He continues, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great fire is set, uh, sorry, what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Now that's something that we've seen recently, isn't it? You think about the fires across most of Australia. Uh, in December and January into February, the massive amount of forest that was destroyed, possibly sometimes by a small spark, an ember in one fire caught by the wind goes to another fire, or some careless uh, driver flicking a cigarette butt out the window and a fire is started, and before you know it, there's forest lost, there's houses lost, and sadly sometimes there are lives that are lost. Well, so it is with our words. Small thing, Simply saying something can have a massive impact on others. We need to understand the power of the tongue. But it's not just others that can be affected by our speech. It affects us as well. Uh, and it's a window into what's going on inside us. The way that we speak is kind of a barometer for where we're at, um, how we're thinking, what's important to us, uh, and how we treat others. So verse 6, The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. See, if we are abusing other people, it's not just them that are hurt. We're actually hurting ourselves. We're destroying ourselves. We're corrupting ourselves. And who loves that? Well, it's not God, and it's not others. That's love by hell itself. That's satanic. It's only the devil that gets any joy in seeing us using our tongues for evil. Uh, he goes on to use the picture of taming the tongue. Verse 7, All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. Well, it's not a terribly encouraging picture of the tongue, is it? And uh, we need to see this in context, and we're just taking one snippet from James chapter 3, we need to read back, we need to read forward and see that there's a bigger picture and we're not left in despair. But for now, I think we, re we really need to understand the impact that our words can have. 
Uh, words, of course, can be used for truth or lies. And great deception can be brought about by the things that we say. And it's heartbreaking, really, for a parent to see their child tell his or her first lie. You're kind of hoping that there's going to be an innocent one, but we all do it. And it doesn't take too long for a young child. We do it to get out of trouble. We do it to make ourselves look better. And it's a serious problem, and it's a habit. And it's about looking to ourselves and putting ourselves first. Or whether it's grumbling and complaining, uh, unhappy with what's going on and whinging and carrying on, whether it's cynicism and uh, hostility towards others, anger, fighting, boasting, cynicism, criticism, gossip, flattery, uh, swearing, manipulating, deceiving, blunt, inconsideration, we do damage, don't we? Damage to ourselves, damage to relationships. We destroy our marriages, our families, our workplaces, our neighbourhoods. Even our churches can be destroyed with loose lips, with people speaking falsehood out of anger, uh, out of pride, uh, not out of love, but out of malice. You see, great damage can be done with our words. And James is calling us to harness our words. How can we do that? Where is there help to be found? Well, already I think there's a couple of things to remember in James. Back in chapter 1, we're told if we lack wisdom, then to pray. And I take it that if we need help in any area, we should come before God and ask for him to help us. Secondly, we're told to be quick to listen, but slow to speak. Don't fire back. Don't use your tongue to bring harm upon other people. Don't fire back when people treat you badly, but rather count to 10, slow down, think about it, and work out how to respond in a way which will bring peace rather than incite uh, warfare. Uh, and of course, we ultimately need God's help if we're going to change our lips, because our lips, our tongues, our words, they're really symptoms of our heart. And so we ought to come before God and ask him to be changing our hearts, changing our hearts so that what flows out of our mouths brings glory to him. Let's pray that God will help our words to be words of life and not words of death.